All right, so we got some brand new Crisis Core reunion information that just dropped on us this morning. We got a brand new one minute long trailer. We got a chart with resolutions and frame rates and algebra numbers and geometries for the game. <laughs> we even got a brand new blog post directly from Square Enix. However, the interesting thing about this blog post is that it's a little bit redundant because it's basically going over information we already covered, especially with our deep dive video we did last week uh, for that PlayStation blog interview. They do offer some new insights from uh, Mariko Sato as well as Yoshinori Kitase. So those are uh, little tidbits I'll point out here and there. But other than that, it's pretty much stuff we already covered. So before we get into the information, if you guys could click the like and subscribe button, if you like what you hear, it really does help out my channel a lot. You don't have to sub if you don't want to, but something as simple as clicking the like button or leaving a comment really does help out a lot. And it's really cool to hear everyone's, you know, theories about what's going on with Crisis Core or 7 Rebirth or, you know, FF16. So I always uh, enjoy engaging in that conversation with everybody who's watching. So it does help out a lot. So getting to that new trailer, we got a brand new bit of footage. Um, we've got Zack fighting Genesis in glorious 60 frames per second, which looks stunning. We got footage of Kate during one of the battle animations. And one of the biggest features of this trailer are those summon cinematics, which look gorgeous. Uh, and it's not just a graphical change. The camera angles are different. The animations are all going to be different as well. The summon cinematics are drop dead gorgeous. If we could get a brand new Final Fantasy VII movie, Movie that looked like these summon cinematics I would be a very happy individual <laughs> hey square at this point you might as well just remake advent children cast the voice actors from the game have that graphical fidelity of these summon cinematics and I will be a very happy person however I am curious to see more of these CG scenes with the human characters we've only got like a brief glimpse of that and uh, I say that because I'm curious to see how they look um, if you look at Final Fantasy 7 remake I think the CG scenes in that game while they're gorgeous I actually prefer the in-game models for the characters over the CG versions there's something about the CG versions of those characters that just looks kind of different or off compared to the in-game ones so you know I that, that's something that I'm really curious to see about with crisis core is how different is that going to look in these CG scenes, especially when he's older? Um, is there going to be blood? What's going on? So to get to that specifications chart, uh, this is basically just showing off all of the display resolutions and frame rates that all of the consoles as well as PC are going to be targeting. So we got stuff like the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4 Pro both targeting 4K resolution. However, the PlayStation 5 will be at 60 frames while the 4 Pro will be at 30 frames. PS4 will be targeting 1080p at 30 frames. The Xbox Series X and S will both be at 60 frames. They do make a note that the Series S version will be getting a day one patch for 60 frames so it won't be 60 right out of the box the series x will be targeting the 4k resolution while the series s will be targeting 1080p we have the old Xbox One X, which I'm really curious to see how many people still have this console. It just kind of came and went, but it was pretty powerful from what I remember. It's going to be targeting 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. The Xbox One S, which holy crap, <laughs> that one's old, targeting 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames. And then, of course, you have the OG Xbox One, which I still have, which at this point is going to die in a couple of years. <laughs> that thing is on its last legs. It's targeting 1080p at 30 frames per second. And then unfortunately for the switch users out there uh, all of you guys are gonna be stuck at 720p resolution regardless of whether you're playing in the TV mode or the handheld mode and it's also gonna be 30 frames for both which might not be a big issue for a lot of people if you're you know playing in handheld mode I don't think 720 is that big of a deal breaker but then we have the PC version which of course is gonna have a myriad of display resolutions and then the frame rates will be targeting 30 60 and 120 for all you elitist PC users out there now, to get to that Square Enix blog post, I actually think the title is actually really interesting because it's called Seven Reasons Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion is More Than a Remaster. Now, that More Than a Remaster tag is something that they used in the trailer as well, and they even used it in their Twitter posts. So obviously, a tagline like More Than a Remaster is going to get myself and a bunch of other people speculating. Uh, is this going to connect to 7 Remake or 7 Rebirth at all? Square Enix is really good about putting out coded messages that we then 
try to decipher. These might not even be coded messages. We're just maybe looking too far into it <laughs> because it could just be something as simple as Square saying, hey, this is more than a remaster. It's not just a simple port. Look at all of the hard work that we put into it. So uh, just like some of the key things, Gamatsu actually did a really nice write up of summarizing each of the paragraphs uh, for this blog post. So the key features include all of the graphics being fully remastered in HD, bringing the game to the latest console generation. And it looks stunning. There's renewed 3D models, including the characters and the backgrounds, which I'm really curious to see how much better the backgrounds look as well. Improved battle system, providing a vastly smoother gameplay experience, which of course is vital. I'm really excited to get my hands on this game. I kind of wish they would have released a demo, but the game's coming out relatively soon anyway, so we don't have to wait too long. Fully voiced dialogue in both English and Japanese, so in case you missed that, everything in this remaster is going to be voiced. So, in the original PSP version of Crisis core there were sections of dialogue that you had to read between the characters so in the remaster everything is going to be fully voiced now so there won't be any extra reading required if you walk up to someone and have a conversation you're going to hear it which is really nice and then of course the newly arranged soundtrack from the game's original composer Takaharu Ishimoto which I'm really excited to hear these remastered tracks as well there's a couple of standouts from the OG that I still listen to uh, as an adult and I'm really hoping they are able to keep why at the very end of the game. I think that song in particular is just, I get emotional when I hear it. It fits so perfectly for Zack's uh, ending in that game. So I'm hoping they were able to retain the copyright to that song and the license to use it. Uh, Cause I don't know what you would replace it with other than, you know, original music. So looking at the actual blog post itself, they do post some comparison photos talking about the graphics themselves. We see some images of Zack and Angeal from the OG versus the new one. There's a little blurb here from Sato that says, we thought about bringing the game over to modern platforms without changing the visuals. However, we put the original on a large screen and saw a lot of elements that gave us pause, both technical and in terms of audience perceptions, which is true. You take the OG Crisis Core and you blow it up, it's gonna look kind of funky. <laughs> it's not gonna look like the person you met on their Tinder profile. You just got catfish, dog. Of course, they talk a little bit more about the gameplay. Sato reiterates that they did a lot of fine tuning on the battle system to make it more fun. The writer of the uh, blog article says <laughs> that at the time the gameplay was fun and still is fun. I kind of beg to differ on the still is fun. It, it has not aged all that well, but again, once this remaster comes out, you won't really have a need to play the OG unless you just kind of want to revisit how the original actually looked and sound and experience that really kind of slow delayed gameplay for yourself. They talk again about the DMV system and how limit breaks have been reworked. So in the OG, if you got a limit break, you'd have to use it right as you got it. But in the remaster, you can store it and use it whenever you feel is right. They talk about this new ability gauge that's been added to where uh, if an enemy is powering up to hit you with a large attack, you can start attacking them to reduce the amount of damage that they're going to be doing to you. So that's going to be an easier way to mitigate uh, a lot of high level boss damage that you could receive later on in the game. And if you manage to reduce that bar all the way to zero, then the attack will not go off. So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much the article. So again, a lot of this is information we covered already, but that more than a remaster tagline really has my brain rattled. Is this gonna connect to 7 Rebirth and 7 Remake? I've been going back and forth since this game has been announced. I really don't know. I feel like you need Zack's OG timeline and experience for the player. There are people that haven't played Crisis Core OG. They need to experience what Zack goes through and what his ultimate fate ends up being. So I think you can kind of have the best of both worlds here where it ends the way the OG Crisis Core ends, but at the end of the game, you get that Marvel post credit scene where it says Zack's story continues and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. It's a great way to get people uh, uh, invested and interested in Rebirth if they really like Crisis Core and Zack, but it also gets them invested in 7 Remake in case they missed that because you can also include the cutscene from 7 Remake if you wanted to where Zack is alive. He stands up and he starts walking to Midgar with Cloud and it would make sense for them to uh, start ramping up the marketing soon for 7 Rebirth if they're going to have like a big blowout maybe at E3 next year. So anything is possible. Of course, we're all going to 
going to speculate for months and months and months <laughs> until Square gives us concrete information. But that is pretty much the video. I am Curious Corduroy. You can check out yesterday's video where I talked about the Xbox Keystone streaming device. I know those videos don't get a lot of views, but I enjoy making videos covering all video game news. I will post last week's video as well where we did that deep dive into the PlayStation blog interview for Crisis Core. And then I will include a bunch of other videos you can check out at the very end. So please leave any of your thoughts and comments down below. What do you think about Crisis Core so far? How excited are you? And what do you think about those summon cinematics in particular? Because they look gorgeous. I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.